Hey everybody, today we get the awesome process of glazing. Um, glazing is not painting, it's not exactly the same. Now it's not hard, but there are some things I have to tell you so that you know how it works. And if you don't pay attention, you don't do it right, things are not going to work out the way you want them to. Um, first things first, it's not paint, it is glaze. Glaze is a powdered glass in a liquid. Now this goes through a firing process to get all shiny, so when you first put it on, it's not shiny. When you first put it on, sometimes it's not even the color that it's going to be after it fires. So we're going to talk all about that process and how to figure that out um, and plan that moving forward so that it does look the way that you want it to look when it fires that second time. Now remember, this only things only get glazed after they've been fired the first time. So your monster mug should have gone on the greenware shelf. It should have been fired, and it will now be on a cart that comes out to the front of the room. Cool? Awesome. All right. Now that your project has fired, it is no longer clay. It is ceramic. Um, first thing we want to do with this is make sure that we wash it off. Now, we don't have pretty sponges like the one that you see here. Uh, so don't use a sponge. Just run it under water. You need to make sure that you get the powder that's on it off. There used to be clay powder on it. Now it's fired to ceramic. So there's some ceramic powder that's left on there. If we don't clean that off, you get what you see on the bottom right called crawling. You don't want that to happen. Once that happens, you can't really fix that. So we try to avoid that from the get-go. When you choose the glaze, which over on the wall, you'll see all the glazes behind you, um, well, behind some of you, you'll notice that they do not look on the left like it does when it fires on the right. So you need to use a little imagination. These fire at 2,000 degrees, so they can change a lot in that firing. As you can see here, we got a teapot up top, and a teapot on the bottom. The only thing that happened in between is it got fired. Notice how drastically different the colors are? So you need to use a little imagination here as you're putting it on just to make sure that you try to figure out what it's going to look like when it's done. Now this is a bunch of colors. Not everybody's going to overlap colors like this. Here's another example. You could even see on the top they put little glass marbles in there and they melted into like a solid glass pool on the bottom. It's really cool. Just showing you some examples of how the colors are changing here. Once you apply the glaze, where you put the glaze is pretty much where it's going to stay. You can't move it around a whole lot. It's not paint, remember? It dries pretty quickly. Um, it is a powdered glass and a liquid. So once that liquid starts to dry or soak into the uh, ceramic, um, it doesn't move around a lot for you. So if it starts balling up and chunking up and falling around, maybe you're just trying to move it around too much. So once you get glaze on there, move it around as much as you can, but then once it starts feeling dry, just go ahead, get some more glaze on your brush, and then keep moving forward. You must do three coats. We have to layer this glaze up so that it gets as thick as it needs to be in the firing. If you do not do three coats, it's going to look wishy-washy, it's not going to look good, um, it will not be food safe, so you must do three coats. You must also make sure that it dries between those, otherwise you're just adding to that first wet coat. So make sure it dries in between as well. With the monsters, Probably not a big issue. If you have a few colors, you'll do, maybe you'll glaze the eyes, and then you'll glaze um, the horns, and then you'll glaze the teeth. And then by that point, the eyes are dry, so you can go back and do the eyes again, and then the horns, and then the teeth, assuming that you have those things. So sometimes you can do it in, you know, small little steps where it dries in between, and you'll be amazed at how fast these dry. You gotta make sure you don't glaze the bottom, because remember, this does melt into liquid glass in the kiln. Um, and then if it cools and that liquid glass is touching our kiln shelf, you can see on the right side, it doesn't end well for your project. We don't want that to happen. So make sure the bottom's clean. Even if you don't glaze the bottom, before we finish next class, we'll make sure that we wash the bottom off. All right, here's your basic one color glazing. How many people can guess how many colors of blue or how many coats of blue they have put on this? If you're thinking three, you're correct. Good job. Three coats to make it all shiny and blue like that. We can use multiple colors. One thing we need to realize, this is not paint. So where one color overlaps the other, they blend. You can't cover one color up with another color. They end up mixing in the kiln like you mixed liquids. We can do cool designs. You can see on the left side there's some brush designs on there. And you can get really, really um, clean, intricate designs if you're careful. You just have to be very, very careful because it is... It's glaze, it's glass, so it flows a bit. You can blend colors just depending on how you mix them. Here's one with cool multiple colors. 
dripping effects. Some of you could try the drip effect on your project if you wanted to. Um, the monsters, sometimes they work for it, sometimes they don't. We're not even going to worry about splatter. Not this time around. But you notice how clean and detailed it can get if you're really, really careful. Now a trick to this is using a small brush. You have monsters that have lots of details on their faces, so you don't want to use a big brush. It's, you're not going to be able to get clean edges, you're going to get sloppy glaze all over everything. So make sure that you're choosing the proper size brush. Notice here we've got some glassy colors, but also that tree is not glassy. Not all the glaze is glassy. So you want to make sure that you look at those plaques under the bottles to see what they look like. When you get over to the wall to choose your glaze, um, each bottle has a plaque under it. That plaque is going to show you what the glaze looks like when it fires because a lot of times the color in the bottle does not match what it looks like when the firing is done. So you must double check what it's going to look like. With that being said, um, also make sure that the bottles are in the correct place on the wall because sometimes you might grab a bottle and it's not in the right place. Don't trust that the other students put it back. Sometimes they get lazy and don't look. So you're going to have to make sure that when you grab a bottle, it does match that plaque on the wall. This can be a little tricky. Just take your time, choose one color at a time, and just double check. All right, now we're going to have this up for you. Um, there's a lot to remember, a lot that we went over. So things I want you to know. You're going to wash your project once you get it. Don't even worry about drying it. It'll dry very, very fast. Then you're going to choose your glaze. There should be dinnerware safe written on that bottle somewhere if you want to use this for food. If it doesn't say dinnerware safe or you can't find it or there's not a little fork and knife on there to tell you it's food safe, I wouldn't use it if you're going to use it for food. Glaze right on the table, everyone. Don't glaze on a board. Leave the boards put away for today. Um, it's easy to wash the table. It's not as easy to wash the board. Shake the glaze well. It is a powder and a liquid, so it always settles to the bottom. Um, with that being said, somebody always throws glaze all over their neighbor, so always make sure the top is on before you shake it. When you choose your brushes, wash it before you use it and after. You don't know who used that brush before you. Okay, You don't know if they washed it. If, you ha if somebody left red glaze in a brush and then you're going to glaze your yellow monster and you didn't wash the brush, you're going to smear yellow and red together all over your project. You don't want that to happen. So wash it well. Get your fingers in the bristles, you know, rub it around. Get all that glaze or clay or whatever's in the brush out before you use it. Use different brushes for different colors. Do not cross-contaminate bottles, everybody. Sometimes I have someone take their black brush and then dip it into the yellow because they're switching to yellow. You just put black glaze in the yellow bottle and that yellow bottle is probably ruined. Please don't do that. Make sure that you get different brushes for different colors. We got lots of brushes so you can mix and match. Use the appropriate size brush. Don't use a big brush if you're trying to get small details or get glaze in small places. If you dig to the bottom of that brush bin, there's going to be lots and lots of tiny little brushes for you. So go down there. Get all the small brushes. Use them all if you want. Three coats. Don't forget the three coats. If you get lazy and don't do three coats, it's going to be obvious when it fires. We're going to look at it and be like, oh, you didn't do enough coats. Um, it's not going to be the color that you want. It's not going to be glassy and shiny. Um, it's going to look weird and unfinished. Do not glaze the bottoms, everybody. And we'll come back around to this at the very end. We always, at the very end, look at the bottom, wash it off, because even if we don't glaze it, oftentimes glaze gets on the bottom. Try to make sure there's no white ceramic left showing. So that means all the creases, all the crevices, in the mouth, inside the cup, um, the teeth, the eyes. If you want it white, glaze it white. There should be no white ceramic left showing when you are done. And then, of course, most importantly, you got to make sure those bottles go back away on the shelf where they belong. If you don't put them in the correct place, no one's going to be able to find them when they want to use it next time. And when they grab it from the wrong place, it's probably going to screw their project up. So always make sure it goes back where it belongs. If you can't, ask someone for help. All right, I think this is pretty much everything you all need to know. If you have not already gotten your monster mug off the cart, make sure that you get that, wash it, and then start choosing your glazes, everybody. This should be fun, but do make sure you don't make a big mess. Also, make sure you're cleaning up a little extra early today. I'd give yourselves like over 10 minutes to clean up because you're going to have to make sure that the brushes all get washed. You're going to have to make sure the bottles get put back where they belong with the correct tops on them and all that good stuff when it's time to clean. 
Okay. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. If you have any questions or issues, contact me on Google Classroom, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. All right, have a great day, and have fun, everyone. Um, don't even worry about finishing these today. Take your time to do them well, and then keep them on your class shelf until we come back tomorrow. Good luck.